what's happening to crude oil prices and the effect of that on some of the oil and gas majors. Brent crude spiked to $74 a barrel in intraday trade today as the Trump administration looks to eliminate waivers on Iran oil sanctions. Let's speak to Peter McGuire, Chief Executive Officer at Exxon.com, who's joining us on the phone line. Peter, thanks very much for taking out the time. Obviously, uh, this is the biggest uh, news that's driven the crude oil prices to do what it has, the waivers, and and it's going to definitely impact India because we are one of the major importers of crude from Iran. So that's going to have a bearing nonetheless on us as well. But what is the sense, 74 to, uh, you know, uh, to a barrel, does it look like there could be more pain? Because it's not just about the waivers, it's about uh, supply cuts from OPEC and OPEC plus. It's about probable increase in demand coming in from China that could see uh, prices being driven up because of the economic data that we've been seeing of late, uh, what's been happening in Libya, a lot of moving parts. Well, good morning, or oh, good afternoon, I should say. Yes, there are so many moving parts, and that's not going to stop. I feel as though it's just been an enormous rally, as we all know, since Christmas. And these don't happen, it's I, I, really probably a one in a five or one in ten year or longer time frame in the sense of the volatility that we've experienced in the last six to seven months. And there's, I think, certainly further upside from here. It's been very strong trading during the day. The hedge funds have started to really engage in this and then, as you mentioned, that, that wonderful statement, moving parts. Venezuela, throw that in the mix as well. OPEC and OPEC Plus. And I feel as though that you've got the capacity to take $80 out for Brent. What that does to Prime Minister Modi and, of course, President Trump from their election campaigns, I think it's going to be uh, quite an impact to the consumer. Mm. Just from an India standpoint, obviously, uh, we have... Uh, uh, we are one of the crucial importers of uh, Iranian oil and you know obviously individually when we've spoken to companies they said that they have uh, you know their backup ready they're ready to import from other countries as well they've had standing agreements and ahead of this uh, ahead of this possibility of the waivers getting uh, worked a bigger blow for India according to you though well, I think it is a double blow for many reasons. First off, you've had um, the election year. Secondly, like any nation, but, but really, I, I feel as though when you look at India, they certainly enjoy cheaper fuel prices, and I understand why, and you've got such a booming economy growing on every sector and a young, engaged workforce that's reliant on mobility and motor cars, motorbikes, and any form of motorised transport, which requires fuel. So it's a great impact to low-income um, young people and everywhere in the world and it's it, you know the price that you achieved five months ago or four or four and a half months ago is certainly a far different price to what you're feeling at the petrol pump right this second and that greatly impacts buyer behavior i feel you know some people say you'll see uh, you know alternatives and you might see an introduction back to ethanol and so on the, the world has changed from really the 2005, 2010, where ethanol was a major contributor and all of this. Now you've got the US producing at record numbers as far as rig, and you've got the next part, the sanctions and the waiving of them and John Bolton's aggressive stance. So I think it's a different world today than what we've experienced in the last 10 or 15 years. Yep, yep, it is. Uh, nonetheless, uh, mid-December, in fact, end of December, Crude oil made lows of under $50 per barrel, and now we're staring at about $74 a barrel in a matter of just four short months. Uh, yep. Do we start talking about $80 per barrel now? We've got it. I think so. We're only three and a half months in. When you're thinking of that from that Christmas um, absolutely smashed to the downside, and it's been... There was a very, very, if I take you through the framework, I was in at the OPEC meeting and uh, uh, on the, and that was around about the 6th of December. OPEC were fractured. Open, OPEC were on the ropes. They were a very, very, they had the wind knocked out of them. And they weren't sure what their behaviour was, what was moving forward, how do they compete against this? And they're just seeing crude just being smashed. And now they've got a different mindset. They've got, um, the world has changed. The world has changed dramatically in those four months. And any market that rises 50% in three and a half months has crude, and that's one of the most major commodities or major trading instruments of the world. I feel as though there's more momentum. The hedge funds will start to drive it, retail traders and 
you're moving into that northern hemisphere summer period where you have traditionally more consumption. So, yes, I think $80 is available, and I wouldn't be even surprised to take higher numbers than that. I can't say where it'll end, but if you have geopolitical hotspots, if you have tensions coming from the Middle East and what impact Iran faces in this, and where um, the U.S. rig production, I feel as though there's more movement to the upside. Just one last question, Peter. What is the most important thing now that's anticipated from the upcoming OPEC meet? You know, there was an OPEC meeting I, I attended in Azerbaijan last month on the 18th of, uh, of March, and that was a JMMC meeting, and, and that we were supposedly uh, going to have an OPEC meeting this month in Vienna, and our tickets were booked like was cancelled, and now that's been moved to the end of June. There's another JMMC meeting in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, next month. I hope to attend that. And I, I feel as though that the, the method and the, and, and the movement of the market has really taken a lot of people by surprise, and the hedge funds and the big traders have got profitability on their landscape. You, the, the turnaround has been that incredible as far as trading profits from hedge funds that I feel as though that uh, every producer would have to be rubbing their hands with glee over the last two months of what's been accepted, and I feel as though there's more upside in the short term. All right, got that. Peter, thanks very much for joining in. So